just setting up the vehicle to load. So, like we said, not very prepared. Um, got no oil <laughs> for the sausages. Hello, James here. In September, we decided to go on holiday around the Scottish Highlands for a long weekend. The trip was sparked by Jen wanting to travel to Thursal for a park run. And so I decided we should actually visit a few distilleries along the way and test the camping capabilities of the Ionic 5. So we just threw together what we had at home for this trip and it was just the jumbo stuff we thought we'd need. In fact, this is our first camping trip and we don't even have a, a proper tent. So we decided to use the car as a camper car <laughs> or carping as uh, I called it. If you'd like to see more Ionic 5 travel content like this, then please hit the like and subscribe and let me know in the description below what you think. With a little research, I found that most of the distilleries were open only during the weekdays. So that kind of changed our plans a little. So if you're actually looking to do a distillery run, you'd have to basically book a week off and travel around during the weekdays. We did manage to visit the Balblair distillery on the Friday, and that was located in Edison in Russia. We made our way north to make a stop at the iconic John O'Groat, the most northern point of mainland Scotland. And we took the obligatory photo next to the signpost at John O'Groat. We decided to stay in the hotel for the first night and after the Thurso Park run the next day and breakfast, we decided to head out. And I was a little bit disappointed because I wanted to visit the Wolfburn Distillery in Thurso, but obviously on the website it said it was closed. So I thought we'll just swing around there just to check it out, just to see where it's located for a trip next time. If we come back up this way. And to a surprise, they were actually opened. They had, um, it was actually just a one-off Saturday that they had open. After a quick shop and a wee tour of the distillery, we ended up in Strathy Beach and the entrance is by a church and it was just a single track lane by the hillside so it was a little bit precarious. You tend to forget all that once you head over the hill and the beach opens up in front of you. As we headed west towards Duress and then south towards Ullipool campsite for the night, uh, Satnav said it was going to take us three and a half hours to get there. And it didn't actually take account for the single tracks and the overtaking points that were along the route. And also we were held up by some of the locals crossing the road. As the roads opened up, we were making back some time as the last check-in for the campsite was 7pm.
Right, you ready for bed? Well, you fit? I do. How's the head height for you? It's a little bit short, but the time wasn't like that. Okay, all right. Bye. See ya. So currently the only noise is from the cooler box here. And we're currently at 43% on the battery. And I'm going to set the car to utility mode, which is click on the home button and click on here, little cogwheel and uh, utility mode and activate utility. That says I'm 43% and it says utility. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the temperature to set it to 19 degrees centigrade for this evening. Like I said, their temperature is about 10 degrees centigrade tonight. Hopefully we will have a nice cosy sleep. I'm just going to sort some stuff on the computer. So we're just going to charge everything up and just uh, leave the utility on for tonight. And we'll see what the battery goes down to in the morning. So just sitting here transferring some files. So probably be about half an hour. Uh, we actually set the temperature to 18 degrees. Because it's actually a little bit warm in here. Outside temperature currently is 14, but it's going to dip to about 10. And hopefully we'll get up nice and early in the morning for a nice sunrise. But for now, I'm just going to sit here, relax in my office before bed. Right. Cozy. It's not too bad. Headroom, mm, can't really sit up. But I suppose if you're just lying down, it should be all right, shouldn't it? Cool. Good night. So another thing I forgot to mention was last night I had my mobile phone on this little gap here, but I actually also used it to hold my Go glasses, which is quite handy. So I was just sleeping there and I was just using this as a little shelf holder thing, which is pretty neat. And we are currently just setting up the vehicle to load. I'm gonna boil some water for tea and make some coffee and have a little breakfast. We were slightly ill prepared for this trip I think <laughs> first time camping in the car or don't you, can you call it camping maybe you call it carping <laughs> uh, where's Matty all oh, right oh yeah that's right okay I think so So you didn't need a kettle, just using the induction hob and a pan for hot water. Yeah. So, like we said, not very prepared. Um, got no oil <laughs> for the sausages. So, and then I wasn't the first time cooking this induction hob. So, uh, slightly burnt, but edible, I think. I am hoping it will release some oil with the sausages. I think they're good quality sausages because there's no oil coming out of them. Although, yeah, and then the other thing we forgot is a little folding table that we had. So, yep, next time if we come camping again, definitely need a few extra things, don't we? Chair, table, because squatting and uh, cooking isn't the most comfortable. Oh, it smells nice, doesn't it? The water definitely helped because it's released the oil. Jen in the lovely footwear for camping, camping crocs. So we'll definitely wouldn't use these cushions again for camping. 
as good as it was, it was actually quite comfortable. Uh, but it just takes up quite a lot of room once you pack up or loading. Didn't really think about it when we uh, started off on our little adventure. But it was good, saved a bit of money, but I think getting a blow up mattress would be more ideal because it's more compact then. So it's now roughly 10 o'clock and being on utility mode and finished cooking and it's at 31% in the car. We definitely need to charge to get home because we've only got 66 miles left. Currently in Aleppo Harbour, charging up the car on a CPS charger. 20 pence a kilowatt hour. This is actually the ferry entrance or the queue for the ferry. So you see all the cars queuing up to get onto the ferry on the, the far side. So even though we're supposed to be doing not close 500, we're probably close to doing 300 miles. So maybe you should rename this video to not close 300, but no one would know what that means. Yeah, we're just running out of time. We just didn't realize how much time we need. Even a long weekend's not actually long enough to go around and see the sites. Especially yesterday when Google said it's going to take three and a half hours to get to Aleppo. And it actually took us close to about six hours travel just because of the single lanes. And yeah, I mean, at least we got a little taste of the North Coast 500 and what it's like to camp in the Ionic 5. And I thought it worked out rather well. I quite enjoyed it. The space was okay. It was not too small inside, uh, especially for myself, five foot six. Uh, I think if you're six foot, you should be okay, but I think you might have to sleep diagonally in the rear of the car. I mean, I still had a ton of headroom with the front seat almost fully forward. For us, anyway, I thought it was great. Like we said before, we kind of missed a few utilities, like the seat, the little table would have been nice, fold away table, and having a proper blow up bed. I mean, after packing it up, you can see how much room it takes up. I should took up quite a bit of the space of the car. What else were we missing? Yep, some utilities, like just general camping stuff, because we never really do camping. We're talking about things like uh, oil for cooking, yeah, and a few other sort of like utensils and things. I suppose the only other thing would be an awning for the car. So we'd have a, a boot awning like they have in South Korea. And yeah, it was just when I was cooking, it was really windy. So it's like, if you look at my face, you can see like, I'm saying, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, cooking on the grass in the wind with an induction cooker. <laughs> uh, but overall, it worked out well. Tastes good. A bit of ravioli, sausages and breakfast rolls. Can't complain. Yeah, and I think the car's about to finish charging. Let's go and check up on it. Okay, so the charger's definitely talking to the car because it's saying it's two minutes and we're at 78%. So that would be exactly 80%. So it knows when your car gets 80%. And so far we've pulled 40 kilowatt hours of energy. And that should give us enough to get to Perth for rapid charge there. To tell you the truth, we could probably make it home, but I'll probably just charge up Ionity because we're still part of the network there. Uh, 100, 187 miles it says. We'll definitely be back next year and be a little bit more prepared for a camping trip and to spend at least a week up in the Highlands as there's a lot of stuff that we kind of miss on the way. And if you're thinking of doing a trip in an electric vehicle, you'll find that there's a charge point every 30 to 40 miles apart. So charging your vehicle shouldn't really be an issue. If you enjoyed this wee trip up to the Highlands with us, 
don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and let us know what you think if you'd like to see more contents like this. As for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.